Welcome back to Boot Camp Day. Da -da -da. Are we day four? Yeah. Okay, day four, Thursday. We're so excited. Welcome, welcome. Yes. Today's project, hands down, like my favorite. I know. I feel like I might have said it was my favorite, but I might have said another one was my favorite, but this one. This is my favorite. Yeah, <laughs> I'm claiming this sure. one. It's so fun. And someone actually had messaged customer service like just before, and uh -huh. I, I saw the question, and they were asking if they could do it without sublimation. And I was like, you totally could. You totally could. I was thinking maybe HTV, printable HTV. You could. Um, but otherwise, I feel like this is a really good starter sublimation project. Yes. And these socks are like hot. They're like a hot item right now. Very hot item. Like I see, I get ads for the face socks regularly. All the time. Like on my Facebook, I'll be scrolling. I'm like, dang, I need to get this. And they put them on like underwear. No, I was about to say, not only the socks. Like, did you, have you seen the full body like bathing suits? Yes. <laughs> I'll see like TikToks of women and they will like put their face all over swimming trunks and then they like hide all the other swimming trunks and so the husband uh -huh. has to wear swimming trunks with her face all over him all day. I know. But I love those. I I'm think obsessed. they're really cute. Yes. So What's if you all are here with us, drop us where you are visiting from. I've seen a lot of people already dropping that just so we can get everybody in here and engaged. We are so excited. Oh my gosh, do you want to know what I just now realized? What? Did we pick a winner from yesterday? We didn't. We didn't pick a winner. So we so got to pick one. <laughs> we will pick a winner. for What was yesterday's prize? I wasn't in here. It was a grab box or a mystery box. Oh, a mystery mm -hmm. box. So we may Which is put, my personal favorite. We may put Sadie on that, um, looking at yesterday's comments and things like that, so we can go ahead and get our winner from yesterday because yeah. we do not want to miss out on giving away um, that mystery box from yesterday. So we've got New York, Florida, Maryland, Boston. Oh, wow. Uh, I saw Bristol, East Tennessee, um, South are like, Texas, New Hampshire. Oh, wow. Everywhere. Boom, boom, boom. There's boom, a bunch. Boom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm loving <laughs> it. I'm loving it. Yay. So today we are really going to be focusing on sublimation. Mm -hmm. So what we are giving you all today is $70 off our Makers Going to Sublimate, Makers Going to Sublimate course. If you are wanting to get into sublimation, this is definitely where you need to start. It is a great start. Even if you don't have your printer um, and you don't have the things that you need, getting that, if you know you're going to get into sublimation, getting that course and really learning and getting prepared. Um, Tanner is actually going to be in the process next, starting next week refilming some stuff to update our sublimation course. We talked about files on the live yesterday, them adding files, because you know we weren't adding anymore. And oh, then, so Tanner said that they were thinking about adding files? Well, they've been thinking about it. Oh, wow. Yeah, so that's kind of a big deal. Because, that's a huge deal because, because Tanner was very adamant when this mm -hmm. came out that they were not going to be adding files, which the good thing about it is you can still take the Makers Gonna Learn cut files and... Any PNG, any PNG that, that we, we offer. Have, yeah. Any print and cut is... Yeah. Um, going to be sublimation ready. Yeah. But really and truly, you can take something of an SVG and flatten it in Cricut Design Space and turn it into, or really any software. Yeah. Like, as long as it's a flattened image and or a PNG, like, yes. and you can print it, you're going to be able to sublimate with those files. So, and I think that the sublimation course goes over that, like what type of files you use and et cetera. Because yeah. those are things where I think a lot of people get held up. They're just like, do I use an SVG? Do I use a PNG? And they each mean different things. And so the sublimation course kind of lays it all out for you. It's like, okay, this is what you need to know for this. This is what, you, you know, and it, yeah. make, it gives you a good solid foundation, especially if it's something you've invested in. Like you don't want to just go in and buy all this stuff and then start doing it. And you're like, where do I even start? Because there, it can be overwhelming. It, it's very I mean, there's a lot. so overwhelming. Yeah. We did have a friend ask us, is this course already included in the Makers Gonna Learn membership? Unfortunately, this one is a separate course from the mm -hmm. membership, and the reason is, is because we spent so much money um, going into creating this course. When I tell you, I was here when they put this course together, when they built this course. The amount of blanks that we went through is going, <laughs> you are going to save yourself so much money strictly in the blanks that you're going to yeah. waste. Because when I say there was one day that I think we went through 15 coffee cups trying to get this right, I have, like, that's that's no joke. 
15 messed up coffee cups that we ended up just having to throw away. I did six tumblers the first day that I sublimated yes. because I didn't take the sublimation course. Uh -huh. <laughs> I was just here playing around and it was my first tumbler experience and I did six and it still wasn't perfect. And I was trying to learn on my own because I'm just stubborn like that. But right. um, I really, really think that the course is very helpful. Oh, we have a... We have our winner. Oh, we'll that's the that winner. I was like, why is she coming mm -hmm. over here? What's yeah. It? Okay. <gasps> okay. okay. When are we announcing it? In a minute. Oh, in a minute. Okay. In a minute. I'm gonna need a... Okay, sorry. <laughs> I don't know about you all, but that song lives in my head rent free. All day. Rent free. All day. <laughs> all day, all the time. <laughs> then we also had somebody ask us if we are... Y'all, well, we've been talking, so I may have missed some of your questions, so I'm gonna try to get back to them. Um, we had somebody ask us if we used a sublimation paper that didn't require butcher paper. I did not know that was a thing, but you better believe we're going to try it out. Oh, okay. A yes. sublimation paper that doesn't require butcher paper. Yeah, I don't know. Okay. Curious. So we'll have, we'll look into that. Um, there was also a, oh, something else I wanted to tell you guys. We have had a lot of people ask us about the Epson um, Eco Tank. No, not the Eco Tank. The Epson Sure Color, the actual oh. sublimation printer. Mm -hmm. Just to give you guys a heads up, we are going to be adding that to our course. We purchased it. I've been playing around with it. I started, I unboxed it yesterday and started playing around with it. It's pretty cool. Love it's it. It's legit. It's like, yes. Stuff, I, I feel like they streamlined the printing process for sublimation because, oh my, like, it's, <laughs> it's bar none, like, you down to how it re prints in reverse. Uh huh. <laughs> like, yeah, like, standard. Like, I was printing and I was like, why, why, I, I, I mirrored my image. I was like, why is this still printing the right way? It should be mirrored. She they would mirror it, it and it would print out correctly because she had mirrored it. Yeah. And we were like, what's going on? But it automatically mirrors your image when mm -hmm. you print it. So you don't have to like manually fool with that in Design Space or in Canva or wherever you're using. So I think that's like really cool. That's like next level sublimation yeah. stuff. So I'm going to go over here and start. I think we need to. I'm going to go because I feel like I want to lay this out for you all, like the design and stuff. And let's just, I'm going to go. Over here. I'm gonna yes. go. If we have questions, just tell me because I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to show you guys like all the supplies you need and then we'll hop into design space. So if you didn't see the thumbnail, this is what we're going to be making. These are socks. Um, are these not the cutest things ever? Can y'all see these well? I mean, I am obsessed. This is Penny. This is Courtney and Tanner's little pepperoni. And I designed all of this in Design Space. You can do it in Canva as well. Um, and then I also, these were the first ones I ever did. <laughs> I just kept one because I was like, I need to show the first one that I did. And you can see like I have a little seam here, but this is my baby. I made these for my husband for Father's Day and they say, I love you, Dada. I'm like obsessed with those. I think they're I so know. cute. Um, so anyways, you're going to need a pair of polyester socks. That's like the first ingredient in this project. So these are Dollar Tree socks. Um, the brand is Juncture um, and they just sell them individually. But the first ones I did were Walmart socks and there were these long tube socks you can find in the men's section. And I want to say they come in like a pack of 15 or something crazy. Like there's a bunch. So I had those left over. We're not going to sublimate on these today, but this is the same sock right here. So you can tell that it works just fine. You just want to make sure that they're polyester. Like whatever socks you're buying, they need to be like 50, 60 plus percent polyester. I would say 60 plus for sure. Yeah, 60 plus is going to get you a really pretty, like vibrant color. Um, these are just Fruit of the Loom. These are more Walmart socks. Um, I don't honestly know where these came from. Did you put these in here? Maybe Courtney did. She must have because I did not. They were with all the stuff and so I was like, I, I can feel that they're polyester. Like, you know how polyester socks feel? Oh, yeah. So, anyways, I'm going to be sublimating on the Dollar Tree ones. And then also, we bought this off of Amazon. This looks weird, but it is a sock. What do I want to call it? Form. A sock form. Yes. Yeah, so... This is actually to put your sock on, like you would slide the sock on here. I'm going to show you all what I did the first time that I made these. I did not have that, and I didn't want to wait for it to come in from Amazon, so I just cut it out of um, 
out of a poster board. I don't know if that's allowed, but we're doing it. I mean, <laughs> I was it like, worked. I, it did work. It did work. And I actually used foam board the first time and it kind of like melted to my sock. So I used poster board and it yeah. was like chef's kiss. It worked so perfectly. So you don't actually have to buy this. Like so far, all we're buying is a dollar pair of socks, right? And if you've already got your sublimation stuff, like your gravy. Like you're going to have almost everything you need. Yeah. Um, I've got a lint roller. This is just good to have on hand if you are a sublimation gal or guy. And then I've got heat gloves, a uh, pair of scissors, butcher paper as always, heat tape. And then I've got my poster board right here. And that's it. Oh, and our heat press, obviously, this big old thing. Um, big the old heat press. beauty. And honestly, like, I know that we don't recommend a easy press for this, but if you have sublimation stuff and you don't have a heat press yet, which usually if you're going to sublimate, you get one. Um, these are not too big to do in an easy press. No, those would work great. If you were going to do any, I would do the sm shorter ones like from Dollar Tree. Yeah, like the ankle socks And you could do even. it with the easy press. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So anyways, let's go ahead and get into design space and I'm going to show you all how I lay my design out. Um, you can do this in Canva or in, um, I'm sorry, Canva or Design Space. And I'm using a few different elements from Makers Gonna Learn. So what I've got here is two different files. Uh-oh. Oh, I flattened them. I was testing our printing earlier. <laughs> um, so these are the two files I'm going to be using today, and they should be linked below. And then I'm going to pull in an actual photo of Penny, which is the little pepperoni that was on the socks. Um, I'm going to pull her in. Let's see. Let's browse. Recents. I like to like grab all of, where did my, where did it go? I like to grab all my images first before I actually start my design process. So someone asked us, while you're looking for that, someone asked us if we could do, if they could do infusible ink with this. So this is, sublimation is, sim, is the same thing as the Cricut infusible ink. The only thing is with the infusible ink, you're not going to be able to print out a specific picture. Yeah. With the infusible ink, what you're going to have to do is take the already pre-cut or the pre-made like sheets of infusible ink. Now, if you just wanted to use cut files with that, you could use cut out the cut files and place them different places on the sock right. and still infuse them into your polyester or poly blend socks. Yeah. That is possible. It does not have to be like full sublimation if you don't right. have the stuff for sublimation. Right. You can just piece it on there. Um, I'm doing this in design space. I can show you all quickly how to do it in Canva, um, like just how to set it up if you all want me to. If you guys do, just like leave a comment and say, I want to see Canva. I want to see Canva because I see a couple of people saying, I wish you all did more Canva tutorials. I want to see it in Canva. And it's just as easy. Yeah. Um, but okay, we're going to start in design space. So I uploaded the image and then right now it's going to have me select the image type. We almost always select complex. I've never really used the other settings for any other reason. Yeah. And then I'm going to remove the background. Now this is a big image, so it may take just a second. This is going to remove most of the background behind Penny. Um, but what I'll do afterwards is manually go in and erase the body. So you can see here, this is just with the background removed, which is an amazing feature on Design Space. But what I'm going to do Everybody's is... Everybody's saying Canva. So just a little quick heads up. We've done Canva um, tutorials before. We've yeah. done quite a few Canva tutorials. Yeah. Um, you may have to go back and watch them through a live. There's also a Canva tutorial in our sublimation course. Mm -hmm. If that's something that um, you're interested in, you can grab that sublimation course today for $70 off. But um, it's so easy in Canva. Honest to goodness, mm -hmm. I sometimes feel like Canva is easier than Design Space. It can be, especially for sublimation. It can be much easier. Um, but I know that you all have Design Space, okay? Not everybody has... Uh, full access to the background remover tool in Canva. You have to have the uh, like pro Canva. You also have to have access to do it here in Cricut too. You do, you do, but I know that everyone has a Cricut probably that's here. So we'll do Canva though. We'll do Canva. We'll just keep on trucking. Um, but what I've done right here is I selected the erase tool and I just bumped it up to a little bit bigger. And what I'm going to do 
is kind of go along this edge. And now listen, this is really far away from me right now. So I'm, try <laughs> I'm trying to get as much as I can. You can also use the select tool to select entire portions that you want to erase. Um, but this is like very fine detail, so I'm just going to use, see, you can see, yeah, <laughs> you can see what's happening there. I'm just going to keep using um, this manual erase. We're just going to get all of this off of here. So while she erases, I do want to address, we had a comment from Anthony. He says, do you get unlimited files if I join your monthly subscription, or do you still have to pay for the files with your subscription? So, Anthony, if you join the Makers Gonna Learn community, you do get access to all of the files on there. And something that we just released was back at the first of this month, at the first of August. Um, now monthly members also get commercial access, commercial use licensing with all of our files. So you can take the files that we have and actually use them to make money. Used to, that was only a yearly member perk, but mm -hmm. now it is a monthly member perk. So you can join our monthly membership. You still get all of the education. You get the 30 days to master your cricket. Um, and you can, uh, Sadie has, look, Sadie has dropped that. Join our membership now with the $30 yes. off for this week. So if that is something that you've been on the fence with, we would love to have you within our community. Yes, we have a lot of fun over here. So, okay, little Penny's little floating head <laughs> is there. Um, I'm gonna press apply and continue. Um, and then I'm gonna need the print and cut image. If I select cut image, we're just getting the outline of Penny's head. I want to see her gorgeous little face and I'm gonna upload this. And then what I'm gonna do is pull in the other elements that I want on my sock design. Um, I just have three other files and I bet y'all are thinking, you didn't use those on your socks. Well, I'm gonna break these files apart and use parts of them, which I do a lot. I like to pull in the SVG and then use the portion of the file that I need. So I'm going to add to canvas, add all three of those things to canvas. Affinity. Yeah, so I, I haven't actually, used that. I've seen a couple um, people that have, that have been using Affinity. That's not something that I'm familiar with, but I feel like a lot of people have started using it, and it might be something that we need to start looking into. Yeah. The possibility of it. Okay. Yeah, I'll have to look into that. Okay, so I've got all three elements. What I'm going to do next is measure my socks. Where did my tape measure go? I know for 100% I brought it in here this morning. Where is she at? Are you talking about the actual like tape measure? No, I'm talking about the pink fabric-y one. Oh. I must have grabbed it. Let me go grab one. Okay, <clears throat> so what you'll do... Oh, looky here. They're laying everywhere, honestly. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so what I did, okay, and listen, I don't know if this is, there's a right or wrong way to do any of this. This is just what I made up, okay? So I'm going to just line those up, and I'm going to measure. This is just so we know, like, how big we need to print it um, and how big we need our design to be. So I'm going to measure it. So it needs to be at least 7 by, and I'm going from the top of the sock to the toe of the sock by 11. So we'll realistically, we'll probably print this on an eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper just because that's the format of our printer. Um, and so what I'm gonna do in design space is make a shape. I'm just gonna make my shape eight and a half by 11, which is gonna be the size of the paper that it's printing on. Let's see, eight and a half by 11. Uh-oh, eight and a half by 11. Here we go, here we go. Okay, and then if you didn't know, Design Space now has the operation to turn your like shapes into guides rather than cutting the shape out. It's just a guideline for you um, and it'll be in red. So what I'm gonna do is start pulling all of these elements into my design. So I'm gonna go ahead and shrink Penny's face down. I'm gonna shrink it down just a little bit more. And I'm gonna go ahead and break apart these elements because I don't need all of it. So I'm gonna start with this, you, me, and the dogs. I'll ungroup everything. And you can already see the text just kind of falls off. All I needed was this bone. And then for the little paw print, I'm gonna contour this out. I'm gonna hide all contours. And then I'm just gonna select these little bean toes. Y'all call them bean toes? 
bean toes. I know me and Sadie both call them bean toes, but we're cat people, so <laughs> maybe they only say that about cats. I don't know. I mean, I have a cat. Do you call it bean toes? No. Oh my gosh, I had a cat and I literally, call, his name was Pickles, but I called him bean toes because his toes look like beans. 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 Okay, so these are all the elements. Um, the other thing that I did was add in some text and it says dog days. And I used our Saturday night font, which is like one of my all-time favorite fonts. This font is so cute. I think I have it downloaded. If not, I'll show you guys where to download it. We also have the <coughs> issue we need to go to. What? <laughs> no, I was just saying we have an, I, me and you have an issue with you overusing Saturday night. Oh, and, and uh, groovy, groovy moves. moves. I know, I know. <laughs> it really is a problem, you guys. I can't control myself. I really can't. So these are my four elements. So you don't want to get too crazy when you're making a pattern. Like I don't want to go probably more than these four simple things. And these aren't super intricate either. So you need to think about, they're going to be very small. Like whenever you design things onto whatever you're putting it on, consider the size of what you're putting it on. So they're socks. And you want Penny's face to be the most noticeable thing out of everything. So her face will probably be the biggest item on the entire sock. So. I'm going to send our guide to the back, and what I'm going to do is lay, I'm going to go ahead and lay her face out wherever I want it. So I'm just going to duplicate this and duplicate it, and you'll have to play around with where it is. If you want it to be exact, you can sit here and line all these up. Um, that's just not who I am as a person. Yeah. But I respect it. That's your journey. I'm just not going to sit here and do that. <laughs> we, Alicia and I have also decided that I was saying something the other day. I can't remember what it was. And I was just like, you know what? That's not my journey. That's your, that, that's their journey. We have decided that that's the new, I guess. Uh, um, bless hip, your like, heart. Bless your heart. Yeah. <laughs> the new thing for, oh, bless your heart. Yeah. I if mean, you're from the South, you get it. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, that's so funny. Also, we had a lot of people saying that they love groovy moves in their uh, different fonts. If you are a Makers Gonna Learn member, I want you to drop your favorite font in the yeah. comments. Let's see those favorite fonts that you all have. My, I'll tell y'all, my top three. Well, oh gosh, I got a lot of favorites. My top three, though, are probably groovy moves, Saturday night, and, um, oh shoot, it just led me, oh, vintage jeans. Yeah. I love vintage jeans. I use that font for everything. Okay, so, whoa, did you guys just see what happened? Why did it do that? Okay, I'm just playing around with my placement. I'm moving things around. You can tilt them and duplicate them and add them wherever you want. Um, if you wanted to, you could just do the faces. If you feel like this is just, whoa, there's too many elements. I don't want all that. That's totally fine, too. I just like a little, little zhuzh, you know? Annie Carroll is another good one, too. Oh. Oh, man. See, I got too many favorites. Because <laughs> <laughs> I love Annie Carroll. I'm going to turn all these just so they're, like, all facing different directions. And you can do whatever color scheme, too. Maybe we'll do a different color scheme this time. I'm going to add another Doggy Days in here somewhere. Maybe here, y'all, 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 y'all. And I'm going to shrink it just a smidge. Okay, are y'all with me still? We're just designing now. We haven't done any sublimation yet. But the sublimation part is pff, cake. Yeah. It doesn't take long. Now, I didn't move Penny's head. I kept her face forward, so I'm going to keep that the same one here as well. Um, let's see. I mean, I feel like, bless you. Bless. Okay, let's go ahead and, okay, let's go ahead and change our colors. So all my doggy days, I'm going to make them the same color. Let's just do purple. I pick purple and orange every time. <laughs> it's who I am. I can't help it. Okay, bones, let's make those um, a light. Let's make them like a gold, a yellow. Oh, I don't want to do that. Maybe let's do like a golden yellow, like a peachy, perfect. Okay, and then our paw prints, we'll make those all the same color. If y'all do these, I really want to see what you come up with. I yeah. just love to see what people design. I'm like a design 
person. I like to see what you come up with and what you think mm -hmm. looks good together and all that. So I'll make that a little bit darker. And then I'm also going to put a background on this. So I'm just pulling in a square and I'm going to unlock it and make it eight and a half by 11. I guess I could have technically just changed the square that was set as a guide. I could have just changed that, but that's fine. So we've had somebody ask us a couple times about the workforce 3620. I'm not 100% like sure when you throw out those numbers for like specific things of printers. I can tell you that we have a workforce um, out in that we use quite a bit. I don't know what specific printer the 3620 is, but if it has a tank um, and you have not filled it up with inkjet ink yet, then you should be able to convert it. Yes. Okay, I'm just like playing around with my placement here, y'all, because I want all these holes to be filled in. I feel like that looks good. What do y'all think? Do you feel like I need more, less? I feel like there's a couple of penny spaces that could be separated. Separated? The one in the middle these? right there, just pull it up. Just, yeah, that's it. That's all I needed. And okay. actually the one down to the left. Nope, nope, up, right, nope, down, right there. That one? Pull her down, right there. There Good. You go. Okay. Okay. Perfect. Perfect. Um, sorry if I'm missing questions. I'm very focused. Let's see. I want to get a sublimation printer. If I feel like, feel like I should get an actual heat press first. Listen, I love the heat press. Yeah. You can use heat it for a lot of things. Heat presses are nice. And you um, can actually find some really decent heat presses on Amazon. A lot cheaper a lot. than the Starcraft one that we have. Yeah. This is like the Mac Daddy. This is totally bougie. Yeah. Okay, um, so what we're going to do next is flatten everything. So if you are printing anything, you need to flatten it. If you're printing from Design Space, you need to flatten it. Um, and you need to mirror it. So, oh. What happened to that? I think the guide. Did, they, did the guide flatten too? I think it did. Okay. Because I, <laughs> I ain't never okay. done that one. Okay, let's flatten that. Oh, beautiful. Okay. And then what we need to do, why, what is my, going on? Did you see what's happening? Okay, so what happened is that dog days, that black outline goes away when you flatten it unless you add that pen function. We don't want that, but I'm going to make this a dark make purple. Make it darker, and then it won't do that. Yeah, let's make these. What, what I was saying, though, is on that left side, it, like, shrunk my square for some reason. That's okay, though. This is cute. Love this. Okay, flatten, perfect. That's cute. Better. Now, so what we're going to do, if you wanted to print this right now, you couldn't. You, like, if I go make it, it's going to say project's incompatible, it's too small. Well, we have a hack for you because I print and cut, or I print from for sublimation from Design Space often. So if you click right here, it's going to say your image is too large. It needs to be between 6.75 by 9.25. So, okay, okay, we'll do it. Let's shrink it. Let's see, that's six by seven. That's perfect. It doesn't have to be anything exact because we're going to stretch it back out anyways. We're going to go to make it. So we shrunk our image down to what would get us to this page, mm -hmm. which is between 6.75 by 9.25. It needs to be within that range. What I'm going to do here is mirror my image. Always, always mirror your image. If you are sublimating, there's like very few exceptions that you wouldn't do that. And then we're going to send to our printer. We're using the Epson workforce. I don't need a bleed. We're not cutting. I am going to use the system dialog. So let's just, let's just start. I'm going to show you guys what I did again because I feel like it's a lot. Okay, so it's going to come in unmirrored. You're going to be looking at it like this. We're going to mirror our image. We're going to continue. I'm going to send to the printer, turn off the bleed, use the system dialog, select print. It's going to look like it's loading for a hundred years. If you stare at the screen for too long, like it's not going to pop up. It's just going to do this. So what we do is pull our screen down and there it is. I don't know uh, why Cricut hasn't fixed that yet. I mean, we're not <laughs> going to get started on why Cricut hasn't fixed a lot of things yet. <laughs> yeah. Okay. We won't. So um, when, when you get here, you're still not going to be able to customize your print settings. The only thing you're going to be able to do is select best quality, which we are going to do that. You could select what tray it goes from, but we're not, we're not doing anything there. You do always want to select best quality, but what you'll do is come to this drop down menu right here on the left side, and we are going to open it in preview. So it still looks like this. It's still mirrored. 
I'm going to go file print again. I know this is a lot, but like we do this so much, I can do it in my sleep. Don't yeah. you feel like that? Yeah. I feel like I do this print from dialog box every day. Mm -hmm. um, and so right now we are on eight and a half by 11 paper, but our image is not filling up the paper because we had to shrink it in design space. So what you can do is just zoom in. We're just going to play around with the numbers until we get a full page. Let's do like one, 150. I mean, we're getting there. What we could also do so that we don't lose all of our image, oops, is um, like print two. Like we could do this one and then print another one, if that makes sense. Yeah. We also had somebody ask us how we felt about, since we aren't cutting, well, how we felt about doing this in Canva. Um, we love working in Canva. Mm -hmm. We love being able to, we print a lot of our sub stuff from Canva. You can upload Makers Gonna Learn files, PNGs, into Canva and do it that way. Another way that you could possibly do that is take a screenshot of that specific area that you've designed in Design Space and then upload it to Canva and resize it. Yes. Yeah. So there's that's just another little tidbit. <laughs> there's Canva hacks also. Um, okay. So this is what it's going to look like when it prints. I'm going to go ahead and send this to the printer. I'm sending two because I want to use one for the front and one for the back of my socks because these are sublimated on both sides. So Brad said, can you just use the scale to fit option? We had done that, but because Cricut does the black border, it mm -hmm. it really is like it's still not that the black border is not eight and a half by 11. So scale to fit, the image is still not going to move around. Yeah, we did not use scale to fit. We just used the scale up. So, and we didn't use scale to fit. We um, did a hundred and like a hundred and ten percent, one hundred seventy five percent, one hundred and seventy. But listen, it's going to be different for everybody because depending on your design, you might not want to like miss out parts of your design. And honestly, if you're working in Canva, it won't be like this as much. Like you won't have to do all this. So you know what? Let's just go to Canva. I'm gonna show you guys because y'all want it, and I'm hoping Canva is logged in in here. Let's see, Canva, where are you? Oh, yeah. um, it's we also had the question, if your tank or printer has been used for regular printing, can you change it to sublimation? We do not recommend you taking an inkjet printer that has already been used with inkjet ink and changing it, trans, or what am I trying to say? Uh, like transforming? Transform. <laughs> or <a> converting. <laughs> converting. <laughs> converting it. Words are hard today. Words are hard. Oh, converting it to a sublimation printer. Just the same as if you use it as a sublimation printer, then I would not go back to ink. You can't go back and forth between the two. The inks are completely different. Yeah. Okay. So this is a little bit different because in Canva, it's not as easy to like ungroup your images and like cut out what you don't want. It's not the same. Why don't you take a screen, show them how to take the screenshot from oh, gosh, Cricut Design Space and then add the image into Canva. Oh, sure. Okay. That yeah. would probably be the easiest. So we've gone over how to design it in Cricut. So that way you can contour out and flatten and all that stuff. So what you can do. What is it? Control. Control Shift 4. Hello. Control Shift 4. Or try Command. Command Shift. Command. Oh, there we there go. There we go. Okay, and we're just going to drag this over our image. And so it takes a screen shape. It grabs that image. Yep, and then we're going to go to Canva. Oh, 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 my X out of that. And then upload. Where does it go? Recent? Yep, there it yep. is. Okay, click and drag. Dang, girl. Mm -hmm. I never did that before. What? I don't know why, but heck, I'm going to be using that all the time. That's, I do that all the time. And then it fits right on your eight and a half by 11. That's gorgeous. That's, That's beautiful. gorgeous. That's gorgeous. I love that. Okay. Yay. Okay. But what you need to do before you print anything, don't get crazy. Don't get too crazy. Flip it horizontal. It needs to be backwards. It and needs... this works really well because if you are designing in Canva, one thing that I've come across that you need to be aware of if you are designing in Canva for something with sublimation, you cannot flip your text. You can't mirror your text in Canva. So what mm. you 
what I've had to do is if I'm designing in Canva, go download it as a PNG and then re-upload the same thing I just designed <laughs> as an image, fit it to my size, and then flip it, which makes no sense. It, or you could just mirror it on your printer. Yeah, or you could just, yeah. It's just a lot sometimes. Yeah. You And you find workarounds. That's why it's good to find a program that you like to design in and kind of marry it and learn it really good. And then you can just do whatever you want. You know what I mean? And Which for us, we use both all the time. So Yeah, and this is a great thing about... Um, if you don't have the Canva Pro, because Canva Pro is, you can't do the background remover if you don't right. have Canva Pro, but if you have Cricut Access and you have the background remover, you can remove the background in Cricut and then put it on a white, mm -hmm. like square, and then just screenshot that with the background removed and then upload it and then edit that image in Canva. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm going to, I need to go get the printouts. I'll be right back. She'll be right back. I'll be right back. Does anybody have any questions? Um, you can also save as PDF instead of printing. Yes, so there are ways that you can save it as a PDF instead of printing. Like if you were um, saving from Cricut as a PDF and then go in there and edit that out, that is, you, that is an option as well, and then upload it as an image. Um, but... Does printer matter for image quality? I bought a three hundred dollar Eco Tank, and your printer is twelve hundred. So when we bought, let me just let you in on a little thing. The printer that we have, we have the three hundred dollar Eco Tank as well, um, but it's just not sitting out. We just don't have the table space for it all. Um, our the workforce printer that we've had, we have had since two thousand eighteen. When Tanner and them bought that printer, it was like, I want to say he said it was like two hundred, two or $300. Yes, it is super, super expensive right now. Absolutely. So if you are wanting a wide format, format printer, um, you are going to have to pay a little bit more for it. Um, but the EcoTank we love just as good. We still use our EcoTank. It's just that our workforce printer stays out on the table is the reason that we use it um, so much. But like I said, I we ordered the um, Epson Sure Color. Now it's not the three hundred dollar Eco Tank. It, I think it was four hundred dollars, and it is specifically for sublimation. And so far, I have absolutely loved it. Absolutely, because one thing that I do love about it is you are using the Epson sublimation inks, which have been great so far. No problems with them, but you don't void your warranty on your printer like if you are converting the Eco Tank into a sublimation printer because you are putting that ink that is not recommended for the printer in there. She back. She back. Okay. It is amazing how everything has increased in price. It's ridiculous. Hurts my soul. It does. Okay. So those are. This is what it looks like once they're printed out. They're a little bit lighter sometimes whenever um, you print with sublimation ink, um, but they won't be like that whenever we actually sublimate. So before we do anything, I'm going to turn the heat press on. I thought it was on. It was. It must it, have just turned off, like went idle and turned yeah. off. Um, I'm going to set it to 385. I need to stop clicking that pen. Um, let's do 385. What is our giveaway today? Um, sublimation printer. Is it a sublimation printer? Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's a big, that's a big prize. Yeah. Like that's a bougie prize. Okay. 385. It's, um, only at 73, but that's fine because I need to make sock templates, um, for, to put inside of the socks before we actually press them on the heat press. So what you're gonna do is grab your socks. Um, let's just go ahead and open the ones that we are using today. So we had a couple people, I, we were talking about the difference between the Eco Tank and the Workforce. The only difference, we love our Workforce, but if you don't have the money to invest in a Workforce printer, yes, I would suggest you get the Eco Tank or the um, Epson actual sublimation printer. So, there was another one. That printer that you're working on out there, the sure color. I'm obsessed. It's, um, yeah. I mean, yeah. I've got some friends that are wanting to do sublimation, and I'm going to recommend that one probably. Especially if you are a beginner. It was so simple to set up. Um, I say it was simple to set up. It took me like an hour and a half, but it was only <laughs> because I was um, 
being very dumb. <laughs> oh, oh my gosh. wasn't thinking right. So anyway. Okay. And then my computer updated. I know, but you figured it out. Yeah, um, I did. Okay, so before we, we don't want to just lay these on here and measure them out. We want to make them flat. So I want the heel of the sock to be at the back of the sock, if that makes sense. So I need the toes to be flat. Can y'all see what I'm doing? Am I off screen? Are we good? Okay. So we want it to be flat like this. If my heat press would hurry up, I could have I could press these first. Um, but you also want to make sure the heel is tucked in. Okay. So we're just pushing the heel in just like that. And then so we'll lay it flat like so. And then same for this one. We want the heel to be in the back and the toes to be flat. I'm just sticking my whole hand in there to flatten it. And then you can tuck the heel in. And then what we're going to do is lay these flat. And we're going to literally, <laughs> this is so, this is like very crafty. I feel like this is an old school craft, but it, we're sublimating, so it's not. Oh, yeah. But this this part is taking it back old school. This is sure. like the resourceful crafter that I used to be whenever crafting wasn't so, like such a huge thing. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I just make one per sock because, I mean, you can reuse it if you want to, but I just get a poster board. This is also, you can get at the Dollar Tree. I'm just taking a pin pencil, pen, whatever, and we're just going to draw all the way around the socks. This is going to go inside of our sock when we go to press it. Oopsie. Um, and that way it just kind of stays firm. And when you press it, it's not, you're not going to be getting all these wrinkles. So I'm just cutting right inside the line. Also, we had someone ask, is a wide format printer necessary or just a want? You, this is where you really have to think about what you want to do as a crafter or a business owner or what you plan on making, if you plan on making stuff that is. Now, keep in mind, if you do not have a wide format printer, you can only print 8.5 by 14, which is the uh, legal size paper. So, just keep that in mind. We have had friends that are, have said, I wish I would have got the wide format, but if you are just a hobbyist and you are just doing this for fun, there are ways you can piece images together. Um, they may not look as professional if you don't have the wide format printer, but it's still doable. Yeah. Gets the job done. Yeah. Okay. Those are my little, they look like hot dogs or something. They're <laughs> ready to go. Um, and you also want to lint roll your socks before. So I'm just going to get a new sheet of this. Um, if you don't lint roll, it leaves these like little burnty blue situations, like fuzz, I guess it is. So the socks that she's working on actually come from Dollar Tree, and we couldn't even find a link for them. Um, but if you will just like search on Amazon, um, Polyester. polyester socks and Walmart has all these are all from Walmart and this is one of these tube socks sublimated so this is a polyester Walmart sock these fruit of the looms are from Walmart so any polyester sock is going to work okay I'm going to tuck the heels back in you just want to make sure and I'm probably going to end up having to tuck them again I should have just waited until I put my sock templates in okay so what I'm going to do next is take my little sock form and I'm just going to slide it into my sock. Like I said, if you don't like you, if you're planning on doing this a lot, you can get the actual metal sock form off of Amazon. Uh, but this is just work for me because I was being impatient and I thought, well, why not? Why wouldn't it work? You know? And so I'm not going to pull this tight, but I'm going to pull it all the way to the top of my cardboard. So like my cardboard mm -hmm. is here. I'm just pulling it there. You don't need to like pull it really tight or anything. It just needs to be just like this and make sure it's centered. Make sure that line is right down the center and then tuck your heel in. And you can see on this one where the, you can't tell, but the heel was tucked in just like that. So what we'll do next is go ahead and put this one in and Wait, what time is it? It's 12.45. Okay. 
Let's see here. Let's see. We did have somebody. So we did have somebody ask us if the giveaway was um, international or just for American members. That is something that we have been really expanding the last little bit. If I can find a lot of times, if I can, our gift cards are for sure for everybody. Mm -hmm. Our Amazon gift cards we do um, for our worldwide members. The um, actual giveaways, what we do is we normally go on Amazon or go somewhere and order them. Um, if we can find them at a good price, then we, you know, if we can find printers. I think right now Tanner is wanting to keep the giveaways for the gift cards international and everybody and the, mm -hmm. um, the actual stuff just for United States. Um, okay, so what I'm running into, and I thought that these were the exact same pair of socks, but they're a little bit longer. Just a little bit. So in these, I just left the toe white because I thought that was cute anyways. But here, the toe is going to be like that wide, which is fine. It would be cute to leave the toe and a little bit of the top white, though. Like, okay. Yeah, yeah so. that is cute. Okay, so I'm just going to leave this top edge like this. So when I go to lay this on the printer, I'm sorry. <laughs> Lay the heat press. When I lay this on the heat press, I'm going to lay these socks side by side just like this. And I am going to take this piece of paper and I'm going to line it up. There's, I don't know if y'all can see it on the camera, but there is like a little edge right there. And then I'm going to leave some of the toe white as well. And we're just going to press it right down on there. I'm going to go ahead and put my butcher's paper on my heat press. I don't think that it's ready though. It is at 285. So we have not announced our winner for yesterday's giveaway yet, which is the 143 mystery box. We also had somebody ask, uh, did I hear that someone does silhouette work? Yes, that would be me. That's Lauren. And if you are a, um, <coughs> just keep in mind that Cricut, or that Maker's Gonna Learn is not just for Cricut users. We also have a um, silhouette course that I put together and it's a beginner silhouette course that I put together and we have as part of our courses, if you are a member, and we also have a brother scan and cut. So just keep yes. that in mind. And you know what? Why don't what? we go ahead and announce our winner from Let's yesterday? Let's do it. Let's do it. So drum roll, please. Oh. Our winner for the 143 Vinyl Mystery Box is Katie Wee. Katie W-I is the last name. I'm assuming that's Wee. Wee. Katie Wee. Huh? You didn't win. <laughs> okay, never mind. Sadie you had one job, what? Sadie. We like pick a name. She's like Katie Wee. <laughs> I said Katie Wee. W I. <laughs> she was excited. It's Katie Winshaw. Yay, okay. Katie Winshaw. That is so funny. That's a very Sadie She's thing of you to do. She's not here with us today. <laughs> Katie uh, Winshaw. Katie Winshaw. Not we. Don't forget it. You're not gonna forget <laughs> Don't it now. Don't forget it. <laughs> Please make uh, sure you email hi at makersgonnalearn.com yes. um, to claim your mystery box. Yay, that's so exciting. Um, oh, sure cuts a lot, y'all. That, I used to use sure cuts a lot. I have not seen anybody ever even mention that before. Really? Yeah. I don't even know what sure cuts a lot is. It's a cutting program. I didn't design with sure cuts a lot, but I used to have a U.S. cutter. I'm not lying. Like, I did not touch a cricket until January of this year, okay? <laughs> I never used a weeding tool before in my life. I used a sewing pin. So, I was, like, vibing and thriving on yeah. my own little trail, okay? I was not, like, using the proper things. But I used sure cuts a lot, and I used my U.S. cutter, and but I designed on Gravit. I don't know if you guys know Gravit. That is also a free design software. Um, I don't know about like the background remover tool and things like that, but it is free. Um, not a lot of people use it. It's like gravit.io, I think. Um, and then I would design it and then pull it into uh, Shortcuts Lot. And that's all that I've done that for years until I used a Cricut. And now I will never do that again because <laughs> Cricut is like so much easier. It's just very streamlined. So, um, but if you now, if you are like a heavy designer and you're really into like Illustrator and stuff, I feel like a, a U.S. cutter is nice because you can make it like gigantic. My, my cutter was like 36 inches, so I could make like huge stuff if I wanted yeah. to. Um, but yeah. Jill and Jan both said you, we pronounced their name wrong. 
Oh, we did? <laughs> no, they were just being silly. As in, we said Katie Winshaw, and they were like, oh, no, it should oh, be oh. Dad Franklin. <laughs> or it should be Jill McDonald. That's hilarious. I yeah. love that. We also, um, Jan also said that she likes In Inkscape. We do work with Inkscape. <clears throat> it is another free mm -hmm. um, software that you can work with. There's a lot of U.S. Cutter peeps here. Listen, and my U.S. Cutter peeps, no. There is not a lot. There's The customer service is a zero, like <laughs> next to none. You, you got something wrong with your machine, you better have a crafty husband, or you better just sit down and figure it out yourself. I had a lot of tears over my U.S. Cutter. I actually sold it, like, last month. I just sold it, which it was because I'm going to get a Cricut, and I didn't know, I didn't use the wide format as much as I thought I would. And I was so used to using the cutter. I worked for a pottery studio and we used the cutter all the time. And that was the one we used. So like I was married to it and I knew it. And I was like, if I get a cutting machine, I'm going to get that one. Um, but we don't have, Sherry, we don't have a U.S. cutter. We don't have one. But you, it's the same thing. I mean, you're going to be cutting it the same. The only thing difference with those is you're going to have to be doing a lot more troubleshooting on your own and a lot more design work out of design space. So everybody's got a lot of good softwares. I know. Yep. I've heard of that before. We're at 370. We're super close. Super close. Someone asked us, um, we don't, the mystery box, so just so you all know, the mystery box from 143 <clears throat> was actually sponsored by 143. They sent us a bunch of stuff to give to you guys. We do, we are obsessed with 143. We love getting all of our vinyl and stuff from there. So we actually don't sell the mystery boxes. <clears throat> they sent us stuff to put in the mystery boxes. And there was, let me go back. But y'all can't know what it is because it's a mystery. Yeah. I will mystery. say it's amazing and there's a lot. Absolutely amazing. <laughs> there's a lot. <laughs> um, Faye asked, will the best method to learn be YouTube? If you're meaning learn how to use your Cricut and how to do these things, um, we do a lot of stuff on YouTube. But really and truly, if you are a member, we do a deep dive into your Cricut and starting from pulling it out of the box, unboxing mm -hmm. it. All the way through you making your first cut, learning the lingo, learning which functions work best for what you're trying to do. Yeah. Um, so really becoming a member and getting access to that those educational pieces, it's key. And that not just with our membership and your cricket, but if sublimation is what you're trying to learn. Yeah. Like we also have that sublimation course. Maybe you're like, okay, I'm not really a cricket user, but I do want to get into sublimation. You can just buy their sublimation course. And the cool thing about that is you have lifetime access to that right. it never goes away it's always there okay i'm gonna go ahead and press these y'all so i've got my socks right here i'm aligning them up my drink's probably rotting away so i'm lining up the top edges to one another normally we are like heat tape people and i brought it in here just in case i felt like i needed it but you don't have to necessarily use that for this um don't come for me okay and then I am going to just line this up just like so. And you want the sublimation paper to be on top. And then you're going to put butcher paper over top of it. If you don't, that ink is going to stick to your press. It's going to get on everything else that you press. Trust us on that. So Allison has commented a couple times, and she said that she's scared, that all of this stuff, she's not even unboxed her Cricut. Allison, I don't know what you're waiting for, like, Let's do, do this together. Mm -hmm. um, she said, I will join once I unbox. The thing about it is you don't even, ha even have to have a Cricut to be a member. Um, Tanner yeah. touched on it, I think, yesterday. A lot of times what happens is when we get, and I've seen, I've had plenty of friends and people that I know that have are like, I'm getting the Cricut, and then they get it, and then they get overwhelmed. Mm -hmm. What we are here to do is help lessen that overwhelming feeling um, so that you know more about it by the time you go to unbox your Cricut. Yeah. So you do not feel overwhelmed when you're setting it up and getting everything ready. That's what the 30 Days to Mastering Your Cricut um, helps do. And the good part about that, I know I've talked about Tanner doing updates. Y'all ain't ready for this. I'm sorry. Keep going. But he's also <laughs> he's also revamping the 30 Days to Master Your Cricut. Yeah, we've been working a diligent on that. Okay, y'all ready for this? Y'all ain't ready. Ooh. Oh, my gosh. Y'all. Are you kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> They're so cute. I'm obsessed with these. Is this not the cutest thing ever? Now, I saw a couple people saying, use your tape, use your tape. 
Y'all, this heat press is like, it, it is sandwiched. It is in there. Well, the thing about it, if it was, if we were doing a design that we didn't want to move anywhere, but this is covering the whole thing. Right. It's covering so, the entire thing and it's yeah. pressing straight down. And all you do for the back is flip it over. And we're going to do the same exact thing. So just get your new butcher's paper. And you can even see it sublimated onto my butcher's paper, which yeah. is hilarious. Um, I'm going to get lay one down. This is going to be my top sheet, actually. Let me. Okay. These butcher paper rolls last forever, y'all. This is the same roll since the first time they ever bought any. So if that tells you. Okay. I'm laying them in face down. I'm going to take my other sheet. And I'm going to line it up just like we did on the front, okay? I'm doing this for 40 seconds at 385 degrees. 40 seconds at 385. Here we go. Ooh. So Tanya said, I watched all the MGL videos at least a month before I bought my Cricut. It's what gave me the courage and to feel comfortable enough to make the purchase. Do you know what I just did? What did you just do? I appreciate and respect whatever you were just saying. <laughs> but I didn't put butcher paper on top of the sublimation paper. After I literally just told you guys not to do that. But I already closed it. We're Sometimes committed. It happens. <laughs> Sometimes it happens. We're already committed. It's already closed. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. I'll just have to wash it or something. I don't know. Um, this is the StarCraft uh, press. And they've been available on 143vinyl.com. So if you love this press, it is gorgeous, beautiful. I love it. Oh. <laughs> So we, uh, Alicia actually put um, poster board inside the socks to use as Hot. like a makeshift form, but you can buy a metal sock form on Amazon if you want to, or if you have poster board, you can just make a makeshift form. That works too. Yeah, just do whatever. Listen, don't be scared. This is the back. You can even see, you can see like where the heel was, but like that's it, y'all. Is that not fresh? Okay, I'm going to take the forms out. I will say, if you have foam board, like what I did the first time I ever made these was use foam board, the core of the foam board stuck to the inside of my socks, so don't do that. Yeah. Um, these are, this poster board so little that, hack is amazing. Yeah. I really love the poster board. That, this is it. That's it, y'all. Done. I love them. Are y'all obsessed? I am obsessed with these. I don't, Penny isn't even my dog and I'm trying to wear these socks. This, you know? <laughs> so somebody asked, can you please tell me the size of the new e Epson sublimation printer? Um, it's just the same. It's set up to only print 8.5 by 14 is the largest that it can print. Size-wise, about that big. About that big. It's, big, it's small. I it's mean, it's not. smaller, yeah. Okay, that's it. Oh, wait. Y'all want to see the side of the sock? Yeah. I can show you the side. Are y'all trying to come after me? <laughs> this so is... This is the side. It's not a seamless pattern. Um, now, you can do it seamless if you put your mind to it, because um, these are, because I was being a little anal. But you can, I mean, it does get a little scary, okay? I'm not going <laughs> to If you don't get it right, it gets, like the one I did of Ruby's face, Ruby is my little girl. I, like, I'm going to, I'll show you guys, okay? But don't talk about my little baby, my little angel baby. <laughs> it's a little spooky. I mean, her eyes ain't that perfect. That one is, is spooky. <laughs> If they're not perfectly lined up, like, it looks sketch, okay? So, don't feel like you need to have a seamless pattern all the way around because you're getting the gist. Like, But what you could do is put all of your images more toward the middle yeah. and make them smaller. That way the edges are all, like, the color, the solid color. That Rather than you, a face. Whether, yes, exactly. Yeah, this is the side of that one. So, you can see, like, Penny's ears, like, on the edges of them, but... I mean, that, those are so cute, you guys. I love them. I'm very happy. I know. Okay. Everybody loves them. Yay! I'm so glad. What a fun little... That's, that's my favorite. I knew I that know. would be my favorite one. Yeah. I knew it. And if you you could not do a color background, you yeah. could just do the faces on there mm -hmm. and just pull them more toward the middle and then line your sock up to where nothing really cuts off Yeah, would work as well. But really, having that color... Um, and moving everything in makes it look like seamless all the way around. Sherry made a really good point. And Sherry, I did that. She said, why couldn't you print larger and wrap the design around the sock? I did that with my Ruby socks the first time. The reason I didn't do it on the 13 by 19 is because one, a lot of you all don't have large format printers. And I wanted it to be a little bit more simple. 
Yeah. But you can. So, like, what I would do for the bigger socks on the 13 by 19, I printed it. I printed the whole 13 by 19. I filled up the page. Mm -hmm. And then I measured my socks on there. And then I would, like, if this was this was part of the paper and this is part of the paper, I would sandwich the sock like that so I knew, like, which direction to face it in the press, if that which makes Which you could have actually done with each individual sock here, too, if you want to. You could, yeah. You can. You could press on one side. The only problem is you would have to leave, you have to leave part of that out if you're using the same paper and folding it over. Oh, I cut it. I cut it. Okay. Yeah. So just cut it and then fold it and there you go. Yep. So, oh, time and temperature. It's 385 for 40 seconds mm -hmm. on each side. Can you do both? No, you cannot. The heat press is um, yes. only heated at the top. The bottom is just like a foam mat. So, so it only gets the heat source for... For... <laughs> You want to start over? Sores from the top. <laughs> I cannot oh. with you. Oh, that's so funny. Words are hard today. I've already <laughs> said that once. They're just so hard. Someone says, I wish I had a sublimation printer. I can't sublimate yet because I can't afford one yet. Listen. We're giving one away. And all you have to do <laughs> is be here in our comments. We also allow people um, to comment. If you are not here live with us, you can comment on the video um, that if you are watching the replay, you can comment on that, and we take from there, and we randomly pick someone to win from both the live comments and the uh, replay comments. How big is the printer we're giving away? I think we normally do just the regular. The we don't do the large format because we can't. We can't even find a large They're format. They're sold out. Listen, we're just keeping our fingers crossed that our large format printer doesn't go out because y'all, yeah. twelve hundred dollars for a printer is ridiculous. It's cray cray. It's ridiculous. You so. guys look like you're really loving the socks. So yay! I love, love it. it. Yes. How can I know if I can't watch tomorrow? It's recorded. Yeah. If you yeah. If you by chance win. Um, or if you are here and you want to win, make sure you come back and re-watch tomorrow's live. Um, if you can't watch it live, watch it um, recorded. We do give you all up to like two weeks to email in um, to claim your prize. Um, so make sure that you are, you watch the replay if you can't watch it live. Mm -hmm. um, Use transfer paper that uses regular inkjet ink. No. Nope. No, we have not. I have it. Okay. We have, we're getting a lot of questions. I know. I'm trying to read them. Yes. Tracy said, does the sublimation course go over all the supplies needed? Absolutely. And that's a really good point. If you have not bought your printer yet and you know, but like I said earlier, you know you want to get into sublimation, grabbing that course now. Sadie will drop that link here in a few minutes. It's also pinned at the top. Grabbing that course now for the $70 off really gets you equipped to know what to buy, um, and how much of certain things to buy, where to get your blanks, how to set up your printer once you get it. Um, so it's really getting yourself equipped and knowing what you're doing before you get your supplies, I'm telling you, is key to not being overwhelmed. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And I saw someone ask, um, they have a press and they have a Cricut, but they don't have a sublimation printer. And she was talking about using, um, like purchasing sublim printed sublimation items do you know what I'm saying? So like it's already like, printed on the paper. Yes. Um, that's a thing. So, and there's yeah. people on the internet who make, solely make printed sublimation pieces of paper that you can sublimate onto your items. Right. So, like if that's something you want to do and get with somebody until you feel like, okay, I'm making pretty good money at this. Let me invest. Let mm -hmm. me invest in a course. Let me invest in, um, what was that? Oh, in the printer. And, yeah. and then you can kind of take off from there. That way you're not like, I don't know if I should come in yet. You know what I'm saying? Right. I feel like it kind of gives you that like confidence that you might need. So, yep. <clears throat> y'all are of... talking and I'm miss <laughs> missing so much. What did I say? Um, do you have to pay every year for the sublimation course? No, the sublimation course <clears throat> is a one-time fee. You pay for it today, you have lifetime access. Yeah, which is amazing to all the files and everything. Yep. So. Oh, yeah, someone said the transfers you can get from Etsy. Transfers, that's the word I was looking for. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they, you can do the sublimation transfers or heat press or the... Um, Infusible ink. No. No. Nope. 
that. Listen, we can't find our words, words are today. hard. Yeah. So maybe they'll be a little easier tomorrow. Yeah. So tomorrow for boot camp, we are etching on slate. It's very cute. Love this project. Once again, it's one of those super cheap, high quality looking projects that would mm -hmm. be great for you to give um, for gifts this coming holiday season. Um, if you all. Someone just asked if you could put a sock on a tumbler and press it, and I feel like that's a cool idea. And you know I like to do weird stuff with the <laughs> That would be a pretty cool idea, yeah. Like, if you had a tumbler press? Or in the convection oven? I don't think you could be doing it in a convection oven. Why not? What are you going <laughs> to, what, what's going to keep the pressure on it? Shrink wrap. You want to shrink wrap the sock to a tumbler, and then you're going to have half of your design on a tumbler and half of it on a sock? I don't know. Get back to me next week. I'll let you guys know. I'm just kidding. <laughs> oh. So funny. Well, if you all um, don't have any other questions, make sure to check us out here. Oh, oh, we do have a question. Sorry. Oh, okay. What? What does it say? You're going to have to go up there and oh. read it. Oh. oh, how much would we charge for a pair of these socks? Well, the internet wanted to charge me almost $40. That's why I made my own. And that's why we craft, okay? And that's why. And that's why we craft. <laughs> because we can do everything ourselves. And I know y'all get it. I um, mean, honestly, I wouldn't charge. If, if you had to design, because this is something that you can't really, the only thing that you could rinse and repeat is if you had a, like a dog um, file already set up, and you just went in change there and the changed the dog faces. That's the only yeah. thing you can rinse and repeat. So really, this is super customizable. Um, personally, I would charge no less than thirty dollars for them. I was thinking twenty-five to thirty. That was my. That's yeah. what I think that our because demographic would get. Because you have to think get. of the time that you put into <clears> all of this, um, the amount of. I'm sorry, there is a gnat, and it's about to go in my mouth, and I'm going to freak out if it does. Um, the time that you put into designing, the amount of money you spent on stuff to start sublimating goes, mm -hmm. I mean, that you have to factor all of that into it. There's so many different things that would go into it, so absolutely $30. No, I would do $30. Yeah. 25 if it's friends and family, maybe. For sure, for sure. <laughs> so, oh my gosh, okay. Yep. I'm just looking... The slate came from the Target dollar spot, if yeah. you guys are asking. The slate that we are doing tomorrow came from the Target dollar spot. However, I could not find a link for it. So I there is a link in the description of the video for Amazon slate cutting boards that are the exact, pretty much the exact same for what we paid for at the dollar spot. Yeah. So if you guys want to see that, make sure to be back here at 12 tomorrow. And Lauren's going to be doing that project. It's so cute. It's like classy crafting. Very classy. It's very classy. Very so. classy. All right. I had fun. I hope you guys had fun today. I did this too. This was a good craft. I cannot wait to see you guys tomorrow. Yeah. Bye. Bye.